This is an extremely important video. I really mean it, especially if you own NFTs or you recently got into crypto this year in 2021. And I definitely would recommend that you pay very close attention to this video and watch until the end so that you do not end up in a very bad situation. And I don't say this in a negative light. I say this in a positive light because if you understand what we are going to speak about in this video, it will protect you this year and for many years to come. And also it will help you keep more money in your pockets. Let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. When it comes to crypto taxes in the United States, almost everything is taxable. Selling crypto for cash, paying for goods or services, buying one crypto with another crypto, receiving mine crypto, being paid in crypto, receiving crypto rewards. Well, what's not taxable when it comes to crypto in the United States? Donating crypto to a qualified tax exempt charity, buying crypto with cash and holding it, and transferring crypto between wallets. So when it comes to NFTs, are they taxable? And the answer is yes. And I wanna start off with a very important concept that you must understand. When you take crypto and you buy an NFT, this is a taxable event. And in the United States, all taxable events happen in the calendar year. So from January 1st until December 31st. So let me show you an example. Let's say we're speaking here about 2021 and at some point in the year, someone bought one Ethereum when it was worth $1,000. And then later on in the year, Ethereum is now worth $4,000. And that person takes that one Ethereum and they buy an NFT. So in this case, most people may not know this in the beginning, this is actually considered as if this person sold Ethereum for a profit, right? They didn't trade it for an NFT. Instead, according to the IRS, they sold Ethereum. So in this case, they bought an Ethereum for 1,000 and then later on when it was worth 4,000, bought an NFT. This is a $3,000 gain on paper for tax purposes. So at that moment in time, according to the IRS in the United States, this person owes tax on a $3,000 gain and this will differ for everyone watching. Some people may pay 10, 20, 30%. It will depend on your unique situation. And I wanna remind you guys, I am not a tax professional, so I cannot answer your specific questions, but I can give you this general information. So this is only at that moment, there's a $3,000 gain. But when it comes to taxes in the United States, it is what you have at the end of the year, right? Across crypto and NFTs and investments such as stocks. These are known as capital gains. So if you made, for example, $5,000 in crypto, but then in stocks, you lost $5,000. If you sell those $5,000 worth of stocks, or it's not 5,000 anymore, but you sell it at a loss, you are now back at a zero gain. And everything that you do has to be done on paper. For example, if someone sells crypto or NFTs or stocks and they make $10,000 and then they take that $10,000 and put it right back into crypto or NFTs, according to the IRS, they still have a $10,000 gain. Now, let's say the NFT or the crypto that they went back into goes back down to zero and they don't have money to pay on that tax. According to the IRS, you still owe on that initial $10,000 gain. Now, the only way to offset that is to sell on paper. Remember, everything has to be done on paper in the calendar year. So if you made 10,000 in crypto stocks or NFTs, and then let's say you sold it for a profit, you took those profits, went right back into crypto or NFTs, at that moment, you still owe tax on the 10,000. Now, the way to offset it is that if your new investment goes down to 5,000 or it goes down to zero, you sell it on paper to offset the gains. Also, something very important to understand is that everything is done in a US dollar basis. We may think that we bought something for one Ethereum and we sold it for two Ethereum. So we have a one Ethereum profit. But the way it works in the United States is that it's on a US dollar basis. For example, let's say in our initial example, we bought one Ethereum for $1,000. Then later on in the year, when Ethereum was worth $4,000, we bought one NFT, right? So basically that NFT we bought for $4,000 US dollars. Then later on, let's say we sold that, that NFT for the same one Ethereum. We may think we bought it for one Ethereum and we sold it for one Ethereum. But let's say when we go ahead and sell in the future, one Ethereum is worth $4,500. So on a US dollar basis, we have a $500 profit. And by now I know you guys are watching thinking this is super confusing. How am I going to do this myself? And the answer is 
you're not going to be able to do this yourself. You can estimate during the year what your gains or losses might be, but you will need a tax calculator. And the tax calculator that I've been using for a few years now is CryptoTrader.tax, very simple and easy to use. And they are rebranding to Coin Ledger. The reason is because they are going to integrate DeFi and NFTs for taxes, which of course is needed now in 2021. So this is very simple and easy to use. And if you want to get started with CryptoTrader.tax, I will leave an affiliate link down below. And with that link, you'll get 10% off. And coming back to these taxes, at the end of the year, this is a very important time because people at the end of the year, they want to sell their losses to offset their gains. So if let's say they made $10,000 in crypto or maybe they estimated they made about 10 or you know $15,000 in crypto and then come the end of the year, they sell their losses to offset the gains. Remember, it has to be done on paper. And what I don't want you watching to end up in is the poor situation that people in 2017 and 2018 ended up in. In summary, in the past, there were people that had very big gains on paper, except they weren't able to actually pay taxes on it. For example, people made a lot of money in 2017 trading, they went right back into crypto, then 2018 hit, and the market tanked. So these people had these big gains from 2017 on paper, but they didn't actually have the money to pay in 2018. So this year, 2021, going into 2022, there are a few things you need to be very careful about. So let's say you sold an NFT and you made a big profit of $50,000, or you sold crypto and you made a big profit of $50,000. Now you went right back into crypto or right back into NFTs. Just make sure that you have money to pay taxes on those gains. Now, if you don't have the money to pay taxes on those gains, again, it's gonna be different for each person. Some people 5%, 10, 20, 30%. If you don't have that money, then before the end of the year, you can sell that NFT for the money so you can actually pay the taxes on it. Or let's say you made $50,000 profit on an NFT. You went right back into NFTs or into crypto. And then that crypto you went right back into is now worth zero, or maybe it went down to five or $10,000. It has to be sold on paper for you to reduce that loss. Remember, we spoke about earlier that everything has to be done on paper, right? If you actually lose crypto or gain money in crypto, but you didn't actually sell it, this is an unrealized gain. So it needs to be sold. So this is why the end of the year is so important come December time where people may have these gains in crypto or NFTs or even stocks, right? Capital gains. And then at the end of the year, they look at their losses and they use those losses. They sell it on paper to offset the gains. And with crypto, it's very easy, right? In crypto, you can literally wait until December 31st, right before the bell drops, right? Right before the new year, you can sell your crypto. But when it comes to NFTs, it's not a very liquid market, meaning that you might place it for sale and it'll just sit there for two days, five days a week. It may not even sell. And this is why I'm making this video earlier in December, because if you have NFTs that are at a big loss, right? And you need them to offset gains, Right now is the time to start thinking about it. It's still the beginning of December and you'll see it is not as easy to sell NFTs as it is to sell crypto. And there's this belief in the space that at the end of the year, just sell everything at a loss, but it doesn't usually make sense unless you have gains to offset. If you don't have gains to offset, then those losses are carried over into your income. But it's not as great as you think. If you don't have capital gains to offset the capital loss, you can use a capital loss as an offset to ordinary income up to $3,000 per year. So let's say you don't have any capital gains for this year, whether it's stocks, NFTs or crypto, but you have losses. If you sell your crypto, your NFTs, your stocks at a loss, let's say at a $10,000 loss, only $3,000 of that is applied to your income for that year. So let's say you have $10,000 in losses, $3,000 will be used to offset your income, your taxable income, and then $7,000 will be carried over into the next year. So let's say the next year comes and you have $7,000 in capital gains, those, those $7,000 loss from the previous year can offset those gains. But let's say the next year, you still don't have any capital gains, then again, only $3,000 from that $7,000 will be applied to your income and it will carry over into the next year. So tax loss harvesting at the end of the year really makes sense if you have gains that you want to offset. 
And in crypto for now, we are allowed to perform what's known as a wash sale. And I don't know if we'll be able to do this next year, but for 2021, it is still allowed. This is when you either sell your crypto or your NFT and you immediately buy it right back. So in that case, you can sell crypto or an NFT as a loss on paper, but you immediately buy it back. It's almost like you never even got rid of it, except you created this loss on paper. However, this is not allowed in the stock market. Currently, the wash sale rule applies only to securities like stocks. However, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are classified as property by the IRS. So this is a rule that we have for now. I don't know if we'll have it next year. With crypto, it's very easy. You can sell, even on December 31st, your crypto at a loss and buy it right back. With NFTs, it's not as simple because as we mentioned, NFTs are harder to sell to begin with. But even if you do sell your NFT, it is very likely that you will not be able to buy back the same exact NFT that you just sold. At best, you can probably buy an NFT in the same project at around the same price point. Now, the downside of selling at a loss if you have no capital gains to offset is that you are starting a new acquisition date. Because in the United States, if you hold an asset, in this case, NFTs or crypto for more than a year, you get a long-term tax break, a long-term tax advantage. But if you don't have any capital gains to offset, you're just selling at a loss for the sake of losses. Remember, you only get $3,000 per year on your income. You are just now starting a new year and now a longer time period you have to wait in order to get that one year long-term tax advantage. And again, I know this is very confusing, all of these tax rules and examples. And I myself, I am not a tax professional. So if you have a very specific question, I probably cannot answer. However, if you have a more general question, you can put it in the comments down below and I'll do my best to assist you. And again, these taxes can get very complicated, but that's only if you're going to do it yourself. Of course, as mentioned before, you will need a tax software. I myself use CryptoTrader.tax rebranding to CoinLedger. I definitely would recommend it link down below and if you found any value in this video if this video helped you make sure to give it a thumbs up thank you for listening and i'll see you next time